just in in Eric Forkel. A shot of 205, the Hugh Millers 202 to advance into this semifinal game. Let's see how Monicelli plays. He's only bowled one game on the championship pair out of the 42 he bowled in the tournament, and that was a 169. So although he averaged 213 over a 42 game period, this was his lowest game of the tournament on this pair. But you know, after the first qualifying session earlier in the week, he stood 83rd. And then made the charge. And look at the profile on Monicelli, especially with that big open arm swing at the top. He's very proficient in this, and then he snaps that ball through at the bottom. Look at that wrist action. And he makes those pins talk. That's the first shot by a right hander. We've seen light in the pocket and just rip the rack. He spreads those fingers wide on the ball, cocks those wrists, very confident. And you can see the perspiration even starting to build on his his face as it's close to 100 degrees in here. Living a seven pen. Player of the year, back to back. 1990, earning $204,000. Nine televisions, won three. See the difference of an angle of attack. That ball doesn't swing out wide to the channel and have the acute angle into the pocket, so he doesn't quite get the action on the five pin that we normally see, and this hence leaves the seven. Once again, because of the extreme amount of oil, the PBA has decided to put down the lanes, and they put down a different condition every week, has forced the players to play down the center. And Leto's best year was 1989 when he won four times, earned bowling $213,815. Now Eric Forkel, two regional titles looking for his first national title. When you have a very demanding lane condition, as we have had all week long, and a lot of the players like that, you know, there's two schools of thought, and I and I agree with both of them, that you need a variety of lane conditions on the Pro Tour. This week, accuracy, filling the frames, keeping the ball in play, has been the best way to attack these lanes. Eric Forkel, a very simple style, depending on accuracy, down and in shot, minimum power, and filling the frames, has proven to be the most successful left-hander. Let's see what he can do against the two top righties, this is his third frame semifinal. Good, solid, perfect. Ooh. Monicelli in his interview said he has to be patient, and that is the way to attack the match key competition like that. Figuring your opponent is not going to bowl much more than 220. need little breaks from time to time. That's for sure. Right through the middle could have been a 4-6 split, a simple spare for Monicelli, the six pin. Watch the pins on the left-hand part of your screen as they get pushed out by the two pin. They push out the two, four, and seven. That's the key part of the break. Six pin, an easy spare. Earlier, Amleto Give us an answer to the question, what separates the average player from the great player? As far as I'm concerned, I think uh, there's a big difference. Uh, in a physical game, everybody's really good and they can get better. But there is a big thing and it's your mental attitude, the way you think and how patient you are to take things the way you take them at the right time and make a big change if you're bowling bad to bowl so good. So the mental part is very important, and that's a big difference for me. Maybe a 2-5. And as Amleto said, the mental part and physical part have both been a combination of his rise to two-time player of the year, trying to make that three-time player of the year. There's only two players that have ever done that, Mark Roth and Earl Anthony. And for Monicelli, he needs, as he said at the top of the championship round, a couple of victories because you got a couple of players out here bowling great this year. And then 
chopping the two off the five. That happening in the fourth frame of the semifinal game. We're in.